So there will be a lot of situations where you have to present what you have to say in a very effective way. So this survival guide for the communication will be very, very helpful. And I uh, listed a few tips. I hope you guys can remember. And before I begin, there are a couple of things I want you to remember because this is all about communication. And one of the tips that you should always remember is take notes. That's a, such a great habit. Take notes because that will help you to focus on what you're listening and also that can help you to ask right questions. So don't forget to take notes um, and then I'll talk a little, a little more about it later on. So this is who I am. So I was born in Korea a long time ago and I immigrated to America. But I, I was so lucky to travel many countries. You can see all those countries that I travel, like England, uh, Australia, uh, South Africa, India, and Ireland, Mexico, Canada, those, uh, Japan. Uh, those are the countries that I visited, but I love to visit more countries. Um, and I happen to visit all those like five continents uh, locally, but I want to visit like you know, Iceland, uh, more of Africa. It's awesome places to visit. And that visiting other countries and meeting and mingling with other people in other cultures and other countries really help you to develop your personality and also develop your experience and have more confidence. And it helps you to improve your communication as well. And I play a lot of sports basketball, soccer, ping pong, and all this, that also helps <laughs> in many ways. Uh, you have a very healthy habit, and also it helps to communicate with people who you're playing with, and it gives you a lot of confidence and discipline. All right, uh, next. Once upon a time, <laughs> I don't know if you can remember, I don't remember. <laughs> During the Stone Age or long time ago, the communication was very simple, right? The lifestyle was very simple. Communication was very simple. They, what they have to talk about is whether they are tired, whether they are hungry, right? Oh, there is a danger. You have to get ready. So you have to tell other people, hey, there. So look at this, like these days, these days, what happened? Like, you know, before you just have to write a few things on the, uh, stone tablet or on the cave, but now we have so many things going on like around us like 24 seven, right? Uh, do you guys all have phones, smartphones? Raise your hand if you all have a smartphone. Not yet. It's great to not to have smartphone <laughs> for some time, but if you have a smartphone, of course, like you, you are constantly bothered, right? Like you see the notification, whether you're using a TikTok or Snapchat or Instagram and whatnot. The constant communication is going on, right? There is like no time that you can just, you know, rest and take a long break without getting notification, right? We're living in that kind of world. It's like, you feel really tired without knowing why am I so tired? Because you're constantly looking at the screen and it really wears you out, right? So we're living in this kind of world. And you know, when, when you are at school, when you attend a conference, or when you are with your friends, um, you know, whatever you do, there are different types of communications going on. So, but there are a few things that you have to remember. Those are the common things that can be very helpful in any type of communication situation. So this is something that I wanna share with you guys. All right, so these are the top 10 things that I could uh, talk about today. Um, so I wanna, I wanna check if you can remember all those 10 things at the end of the presentation, but there might be a lot more, but these are uh, something that I think that they are very, very important, all right? The first, be an active listener. This sounds very simple, like active listener. What does that even mean, like being an active listener? Raise your hand if you have something that resonates you the most um, in what situation. 
do you when when you are in a conference or this kind of program do you ask a lot of questions do you pay attention to the face of the speaker <laughs> right because that's very important important like it, it's all about paying attention and being an active listener and what about are you ignoring all the distractions like darts barking and phones ringing and i don't know what else what other distractions around you are bothering you that all blocks you from being an active listener so these are the tips that you have to remember to be a good listener being a good listener is the beginning of a good communicator. If you're not a good listener, you're not a good speaker. You cannot be a good speaker because you won't understand why it is important to being a good listener. So this is like in you know, a mutual thing. So I'm a good listener to you because I'm gonna pay attention to what you're about to say and your facial expression and what you, whether you are like confused right? Because I have to catch that. And also you can catch me whether I'm very excited or I'm sad and I'm very serious. Like some topics I may say things very seriously and quietly. So you have to listen to that and being a very, very active listener. That will be very helpful. All right, next. So it depends on uh, what kind of situation you are in, choosing the right communication method is very important too. Yeah, this sounds very simple. Well, sometimes I email my teachers or my friends, or I just uh, send a text message, right? And you know, some cases you just do Snapchat with your friends, right? Sometimes you attend classes or attend the conference in person, or like this, you can attend the virtual conference. So. But you have to ask these questions. What is the right communication method that works the best? So you have to think about like, is it really urgent? Like if it is not urgent, don't send a text message or a call, right? Is it personal or is it, is it okay to tell everybody, right? So you can see, okay, this is something personal. So I have to send only to that person, right? Uh, and also you have to think about the length of the communication. Like, is it a very short conversation? Probably I can just quickly open up a Zoom meeting and I have the conversation. If it is urgent, it's very important. And you wanna see, you wanna catch every little things, every detail, then you have to attend in person. You have to go even fly to a location and you meet somebody in person that will be most effective in some situations. So, Think about what would be the best way to communicate. Any questions so far? All right, I'll take it as no questions. You understood everything well. All right, I'll move on to the next clip. All right, be friend, uh, being uh, friendly is very, very important too, right? Because when you communicate, you know, you may have a situation, you may, you might have like had argument with your brother and sister <laughs> and you come to a classroom or you are meeting your friends, whatever happened before shouldn't affect you when you communicate with someone else in here. You would not know what happened to me like 30 minutes ago, right? Um, you have to be really friendly when you are communicating with your people, showing positive attitude and being open-minded, just ready to listen to anybody, any questions, right? And smile a lot, that helps, that helps a lot. And praise other people. That's another way that you can improve communication and other people will re really appreciate it. Like small thing, catch a small thing. Oh yeah, I, I remember, um, you know, uh, when I look at Paul, uh, you know, you, you have that background. I don't know if it is a real one, but it looks like that's a, your virtual background. I really love that. <laughs> I, I say it in like different, uh, uh, different webinars. That's awesome. Catching a small thing really helps you to build a relationship with other person, right? So that, that's very important. Uh, that's also uh, all part of being friendly. All right. This is very important, right? 
some people are more extrovert, right? They are really friendly and they have no problem speaking uh, in front of like 100 people, right? But some people are really shy. Like myself, I was like extremely shy. I couldn't say a word in front of anybody. Right? I was a very shy person. And then that means like I didn't have any confidence. Like what if I make a mistake? What if I say something wrong? What if that person misunderstand me? Like when you have all that questions, you lose confidence. But communication really works well when you have that confidence. It's not that you pretend that you know something you don't know, but it's about having a confidence that I'm okay. I prepared this much. Like let's say you have a group project and you have to present it in front of your class and you prepare something, but you don't feel like, uh, you don't feel like you completed that project. But don't worry about it, right? You just have to have confidence. Well, this is what I did, and this is what my group did. Just present it with confidence. I think people will accept it, and people will really appreciate it when you present this uh, with confidence, right? And how do you do that? How to practice confidence? is having an eye contact. That's one, one way to have confidence. Like have eye contact, look at everybody. Like it's hard to have eye contact on Zoom, but when you are attending like meetings and classes in person, make sure to have an eye contact with some people, right? That really helps you. And also prepare a lot, prepare in advance. So you prepare a lot, you spend a lot of time, you think about it, then you will build confidence, right? But if you're not prepared, of course, it will be very hard to have confidence, right? And also ready to answer any questions because people may not understand you. So do you have any question? You have to keep asking because you don't know whether somebody is like hesitating. Oh, when is it gonna stop, right? So be prepared to answer any questions or ask those questions. Do you have any questions? That's a very good way to give opportunity to other people. And that also shows you, oh, I'm confident. Like I'm ready to answer any questions. All right, and look, look at my po uh, posture. Like I'm sitting straight. This is another way to show confidence. Uh, someone is like slouching and someone is like, you know, <laughs> laying back. It, this is kind of rude, right? When, when you are doing this kind of like, you know, presentation, you have to like, you know, sit straight or when you're standing up, uh, stand straight, right? That shows your confidence level too. Any questions so far? Okay, I'll move on to the next one. All right, this is, this is another very hard but important. Giving feedback or asking for feedback is very important too. So you ask people like, how did I do? How was my project? How was my speech? Did I do good or did I do bad? So asking those questions and also like if you're a listener, provide feedback to other person. Yeah, I loved your presentation, but I think it would be better if you added one more slide or why oh, it would be really wonderful if you uh, lower your voice a little bit. Right? Those are really good feedback to other person. Or you can expect that feedback from other people too. Because, you know, I'm not perfect, right? I'm more than willing to listen to your feedback to me so I can improve my presentation as well or my communication. So ask feedback and accept feedback. Right? That's very, very important. And it also talks about taking notes, right? In order to give feedback, what do you have to do? You cannot remember everything. Our attention span is very short. So take notes so that you can ask questions or provide really meaningful and actionable feedback to other people, All right? Any question on this? Okay, next, write volume and write pace. This is also very important. Sometimes uh, my wife uh, tells me I'm too loud <laughs> when I speak. 
It's like everybody can hear me from afar. <laughs> it's like, Billy, you don't have to like yell. <laughs> Your volume is already loud enough. So just think about like, uh, look around your room and see, am I speaking too loud? Am I, anno am I too annoying to other people or am I too quiet? So people like it, they're struggling so hard to listen to you, right? Some people are like that. It's okay, but just just think about it, like how how to control your volume, right? That's very important. Also, are you talking too fast or are you talking too slow? And that makes you fall asleep, right? So just, you know, control your pace and also control your volume. That really helps you, right? It's not about your intonation. It's really not about like, in, like language accent. I'm talking about accent in a different way because, you know, I myself is a foreigner. Uh, English is my second language. So I don't have a perfect accent, but, you know, I'm trying my best to uh, address what I'm trying to say in a very clear way. That's the accent, that's the pitch, and that's the tone and I'm trying hard so that you won't miss anything important. All right, empathy. Have you guys heard about this word empathy a lot? Raise your hand if you heard the word empathy. Okay, some of you, okay, I saw two hands of and a one virtual hand of, thank you. Yeah, so empathy is different from sympathy, right? Well, we're not talking about sympathy in here. Of course, so we have to be sympathetic to certain situations, but empathy is very important when you do communication. Like, let's say you're talking with someone and that someone is going through a lot of trouble, like ha have a very sad situation. But you can be so joyful and show that, oh, I don't care, like whatever you are going through, uh, because I'm happy, right? I'm a very confident person. I'm so happy and I'm going my way. But you have to be really showing, uh, show empathy that, oh, I understand. How, how is it going? Like how are you holding up, right? You show that empathy is really helping also other people to paying attention to you. It's like, oh, okay, he is not just like going his own way, but he try to understand me because it's mutual, right? This is not just me speaking, but also I'm trying to communicate with all of you. So this is very, very important. All right, be respectful. It's very important too. So what are the practical things in here? So you have to know when to initiate, when to start your uh, com communication. Because sometimes the communication involves a lot of people and it's very easy to be rude by intercepting others. Like they didn't uh, complete their sentence and you're like cutting in and you have, you're saying what you have to say without you know, waiting for other people to stop and complete their sentence, right? That's very rude. And also sometimes you may not be able to catch when to start, when to cut in. So this is a, you have to do practice. Like when should I start? When should I stop? That's very, very critical. And here's one tip I'm using all the time because I'm in a situation a lot that there are a lot of people, we have a group conversation and if almost everyone is so passionate. <laughs> everyone wants to talk. So it's hard to get in. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm not that aggressive. So when, when should I get in? So one, one thing, practical thing that I do is I, I make like some sound like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and then people start like looking at me. It's like, what is it? <laughs> what is he trying to say? Right? Then they slow, slow down and then I can get it. <laughs> That, that really works. You can, you can try yourself, it really works. And then also don't speak like more than a minute and you have to like look around this, uh, the room and see it's like, are they, are they really bored or are they trying to say something? But am I speaking like too long, right? This is not a lecture situation. It's about the conversation situation, right? You are talking with some people and you may be, too excited and you may be speaking for so long 
without knowing that people are getting bored or they are like, you know, they are out of the conversation. So speak a little bit and then figure out whether people are listening. All right, that's very important. I don't know if, if you noticed it or not, like, but I use a lot of facial expressions because that's another language, right? Whether I'm like really serious or I'm like so excited and I show my emotion and my hand gesture. This is all part of your communication. You can just like be like a stone and say, oh, nonverbal cue is very important. The communication has to be done with all the communication methods and all those like emojis. That's really <laughs> boring and monotonous, right? So you have to use your hand gesture properly and your facial expression and show your emotion. I think that's very effective, right? This is the last slide actually, before I open it up for more questions, but this is last slide. So five minute rules. Raise your hand if you have a heard, if you heard about the, uh, the rule, five minutes rule. No? Oh, there you go. Do you, uh, do you know what five minutes rule is about? Uh, when you drop something and there's only five minutes. Oh, the five minute rule. Yeah. I never heard of the five minute rule. Okay. But <laughs> good try, the five good try. second rule. I see, five seconds. What is five seconds rule? When you drop something and you, you just pick it up before it, but I don't think that's really good. Wow, it's good to know. Like uh, now I learned a new thing about five second rule. <laughs> okay, five minutes rule is, is something that, uh, let's say you got, a, you got a text, right? From somebody and they say, hey, Billy, I, I want you to like call me back and you have to do, uh, could you like um, do something for me, right? But before responding to that request, think about it. Is that gonna take more than five minutes or not? Is it something that I can do quickly or will that take a long time or is it so complicated? Just think about, should I spend more than five minutes or not? That will give you different communication method. You may say, hey, you, you know that it's gonna take less than five minutes. It's a very short thing, it's a very quick thing. Just respond immediately. Okay, this is my answer, right? And you can, you can move on to other things, right? What's called a low hanging fruit, right? You heard that expression, low hanging fruit? It's like those fruits are like hanging really low from the tree. So you can like grab it very quickly, easily, right? Those are the low hanging fruit. Do it right away. Don't postpone, okay? So because if you postpone all those things, they are piling up, you cannot, handle all those things so if it is something that you can handle quick within five minutes just do it don't think you don't have to prioritize just do it right away but if it's going to take more than five minutes please don't ignore it but acknowledge it okay jo uh, joanne like i'll get back to you by tonight because you know like you, either you're busy or this takes a lot of time for me to handle things. Then you acknowledge it. Okay, I got your question, uh, but I'm right now busy, but I'll get back to you by tomorrow morning. Just acknowledge and give them some time frame, right? That's one good way to communicate. Try to practice it and see how you see the communication being improved, okay? So that's all, and is there, I mean, th these are the 10 things. Uh, I'll just uh, repeat all this, like being an active listener and choose the right communication method and being friendly and having confidence and share your feedback and control your volume and also show empathy and be respectful and use the nonverbal cues as well and be responsive. Those are the 10, ten things that we talked about. Do you guys have, have any other questions? Yeah, um, I wanted to ask how you were able to overcome being an introvert. 
Wow, that's a great question. Thank you, Joanna. Yeah, being introvert uh, was was going on for a long time. Actually, I was uh, I'm still an introvert, like half introvert. I overcome quite a bit, but I still consider myself like half introvert and half half extrovert. I think that that uh, has been happening over time. And one of the things that I used well, actually, that helped me to overcome in, uh, being an introvert was having a confidence. Uh, having this opportunity instead of like avoiding this opportunity, like presenting in front of other people because I wanted to avoid because I didn't feel good. And, but taking that opportunity one by one, that gave me a little bit of confidence every time when I did that. And then that confidence building really helped me uh, overcoming my like anxiety and my fear of other people like judging me like oh what if you know and then another thing which is a little related to that as well is it's okay to make mistakes i keep telling myself it's all right like i'm a human being <laughs> i'm not perfect right even when i speak a uh, foreign language and sometimes i i feel like oh what if i make mistakes like in the syntax and like what if i don't remember the right words what if what am I going to do? But I tell myself, like, it's okay. Like, I'm a foreigner. <laughs> it's perfectly fine to speak a broken English, right? So, you know, realization uh, about yourself and, you know, having confidence in you, it's very important. Like, whatever other people think of you is secondary. But think of you as you are very important. Like, you know, God says in Genesis chapter one, verse 31, like he created everyone, including human being. And he said, it's all good, right? You accept it. I accepted it. Well, God created me and I'm good. <laughs> Who, whoever I am, I'm good. That really helped me to boost my confidence and have an absolute value in myself, not comparing to other people, but I, I am very important to God, right? Having that clear identity also helped me to overcome my being an introvert. But great question, Dren. Um. Also, if you're talking to someone, uh, if you're talking to someone about thoughts or about that are straight from your mind, then how do you like prevent your? How do you like? um speak like straightforwardly and not say like a lot of ums or like or as or like something well that's a great question too wow i'm, I'm very surprised because that's more of a advanced technique because i don't know if you heard about uh toastmaster toastmaster is a program worldwide program people like me who are not good at speaking <laughs> we attend uh, to learn how to speak properly, like without saying a lot of those like uh, um, kind of words and practice it in front of people. Because a lot of people attending those meetings, Toastmaster meetings, half of them are struggling and half of them overcame. And they develop methods. One, one of the tactics that you can use is try to slow down I'm not saying you have to speak slowly. I'm, I'm saying you have to slow down. And whenever you don't remember what to say next, instead of trying to make some sound like, uh, the, uh, well, instead of saying those words, what you can do is take a pause. Like one second or two seconds. You take a pause, it's perfectly fine. And then say the next words or the next sentence giving yourself some time to think and organize your idea, I think that will help you overcome those kind of habits. But great question, Paul. Oh.